Hello there. So past two days, I was learning about stem cells. Well, briefly, stem cells are the body's raw materials, cells from which all the other cells with specialized functions are generated under the right conditions in the body or a laboratory. Stem cells divide to form more cells called daughter cells. And eventually, cultured stem cells can become any cell in the body. So while I was studying about this, I got some interesting ideas. We all have heard before that Elon Musk, with his SpaceX project, will land humans on Mars by 2026, saying that it's an achievable goal. So thinking about this, they are definitely going to grow plants on Mars as a source of food. But what about the meat lovers like me? <laughs> they can't be eating soy-based food all the time. And an idea on bringing animals to Mars, woo! The expense of getting them there and keeping them alive would be huge. No animal could survive the near vacuum of the thin atmosphere, so they would require almost as much life support as people. Using them for food would be a waste of limited resources. However, by using the same process on producing various tissues and organs from stem cells to serve as a repair system, we can now also use it for meat production. So let's thank the Dutch scientist William van Eelen for coming up with the idea for cultured meat in the 1950s itself. Last year, the researchers from Harvard announced They've developed a technique that brings a far more realistic lab-grown meat. This team tried to solve on how to grow skeletal muscle tissue in long thin fibers, like how it occurs naturally in livestock. Well, mimicking that fiber structure has been a huge challenge for lab-grown meat. It's because we can't grow muscle cells just like that in a petri dish all by themselves. They need something to hold on to as they grow. So these scientists used gelatin, a material which is edible, something the cells could easily latch on to and cheap enough to produce to keep costs down. They spun it into fibers using a technique inspired by cotton candy. The final product is similar to the supportive extracellular matrix of natural muscle tissues. With the gelatin nanofibers spun, the finished products did not contain as many muscle fibers as natural meat. They did achieve a texture that was similar to the real thing, so there are a number of hurdles scientists need to clear before more sustainable and slaughter-free meat on store. Furthermore, meat is more than muscle. Its flavor and juiciness also comes from fat. Growing fat cells in a lab that match with muscle and recreate the texture of steak has proven to be a challenge. So lab-made meat is still a work in progress. With money pouring into research and progress being made by scientists like the ones at Harvard, lab-made meat that's tasty, slaughter-free, and environmentally friendly is on the way. <sighs> Can't wait to live in the next era.